they don't really like me Cause I go fuck your bitch and fuck your mom and I Bro, I'm good Welcome back to another video today. We're gonna be talking about streamers who ruined their careers We don't really have an intro for this one unless me promoting my kick account counts as an intro Oh, this video is at 60 FPS isn't it? Ah, that must be weird for you guys I just forgot to turn that setting off damn rendering is gonna be annoying. I stream. I'm a live streamer now Yay, right when this video goes up. I should be streaming on kick make sure to go follow me there gonna be having fun with you guys I hope I don't end up on one of these videos in the future by another small youtuber <laughs> But yeah, let's get started with streamers who ruined their careers James Phantom Lord Varga Six years ago on July 17th, 2016, The Richard Lewis Show on YouTube published an insanely excellent discovery that would end up being a massive jab at Phantom Lord's streaming career. Now, just so you know, Phantom Lord had a massive fan base back in 2016 with about 1.3 million followers and was ranked 7th in terms of total followers. His primary content was Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which of course fans loved. And to take financial advantage of his numbers, he heavily promoted a CSGO gambling site named CSGO Shuffle. And basically, in the video, Lewis explains how a hacker while trying to get into CSGO Shuffle and rip it off, found incriminating evidence against Varga. The hacker came across Skype logs of conversations between Varga and CSGO Shuffle coder Duhao Joris that suggested Varga owned the site. There were about 1,800 messages dating back from the summer of 2015. Lewis's exact statement was that the messages I remember this story. heavily suggest this crazy, to a bro. degree of certainty that Phantom Lord is the owner of CSGO Shuffle. And on top of that, he has gambled exclusively with, quote, house money taken from the Bro business. was doing CSGO Apparently, scams. Varga was paying Joris big money to make it seem like he could win or lose whenever he wanted. This was obviously a very disturbing scenario because not only was Varga not disclosing his ownership interests when promoting the site, but also gambling with money he made from the business. Following the expose, Varga's Twitch channel was removed due to terms of service violations. The ban came as no surprise because skin gambling had been explicitly prohibited by Valve, the game developing company, and the FTC. These two firms had issued statements following YouTubers Trevor T. Martin Martin and Thomas Syndicate. Yeah, that was a big story when this happened. Gambling sites. In Varga's case, Twitch came out and made its position clear, stating, As a reminder, per Twitch's terms of service, broadcasters are not permitted to stream content that breaks their terms of service or user agreements of third parties. What they meant do that. is that if you're doing illegal CS stuff, like go skin gambling? Like I don't or the think FTC, so. I think you just do regular gambling. Twitch's terms of service. Vargo went dark for a while after the ban and then reemerged in 2018. I think you just do the regular casino slot shit. Unlawfully suspending his account and ending his contract with no explanation. He also insisted that the suspension was based on false what accusations from people trying to tarnish his name. Surprisingly, he won the case in April 2021 and even celebrated the win in this tweet, which reads in part that, quote, Twitch can't bully, lie, and treat streamers unfairly the way they have for years. The court awarded him $20,720. Wow. Surprisingly, his win was despite a countersuit from Twitch where they claimed that they had warned him against streaming content that violated his contract with them. You can see those violations in this image. However, winning the court case doesn't mean that he's going to be returning to Twitch. The 2016 ban is permanent. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if he pops up on kick. Go follow me on kick by the way. <laughs> in an email to PC Gamer after the court case ended, Twitch said, we absolutely stand behind our decision to terminate his account and he will not be allowed back onto our service. So he's still not on Twitch and it doesn't seem like he's active on any other platform. And his last tweet was in 2021, just after the court case. So it seems his career is done for. You know, we don't know if these streamers have like other businesses outside of it, especially this dude since he likes not saying he's affiliated with businesses. When I say they ruin their careers, I'm talking about their online image because you know, they could have some investments in stocks that we don't know about and are living their streamer lavish. careers. Yeah, basically. that's what we're going to move forward with. The idea of these streamers ruining their online images. So let's head on to the next one. Brandon Atrioc Ewing. Now, the saying goes, curiosity killed the cat. And Brandon Ewing, aka Atrioc, a popular Twitch streamer, is one of the most recent cases of people finding this out the hard way. Atrioc, who has over 315,000 followers on Twitch, was caught by his fans watching deep fake P word videos of oh, other yeah, this just Twitch happened people. recently. An action that made his career nosedive. This nigga so was watching, he got caught watching deep fake porn. Happened. Well, let's start with how he was found out. A now deleted post on the subreddit r slash livestream fail made on Monday, January 30th. But why would you? Why why would you watch deep fake porn the of the women that you're friends with? Like that is slipped up and it that is fucking weird as shit. One of his uh, on his PC is Bavfakes, Fantopia. This is a website where someone could pay for deep fake p word content of famous influencers. Now I'm pretty sure you guys know how advanced AI is, so this shouldn't really be a shocker that this exists. It's a pretty creepy concept. I'm sure it's probably some weird men running the website in the background and unconsensually selling these images of people that don't want to participate in 
those images or videos. There's there's videos too. On the tab that sold him out, there were visible deepfake thumbnails of popular streamers, Pokimane, Maya Higa, and Cutie Cinderella. The evidence was clear. All streamers that he was friends with. No chance of even denying it. So just a few hours after the clip had gone viral, Atriac appeared on a live stream with his girlfriend to address the situation. In the stream, and he, he had a girl. With, I want to say first of all that it is true. It's 100% true. And then goes on to offer a very teary apology. He explains that what he did wasn't a pattern of behavior, but rather a result of morbid curiosity. Basically, he explained that at two in the morning, he had been reading up on AI and deepfakes. Then he somehow ended up on P Hub, where he saw the deepfake ads, clicked on them, and landed on Bavs. <laughs> this nigga paid. To this nigga clicked on a Pornhub ad. <laughs> the content. He also insisted that he was the quote, most normal person and would never do something like that again. It was evident that what he did was so wrong because two days later on February 1st, 2023, he wrote another apology in a tweet via Twitlonger where he apologized like, to streamers. Like, think about that. Like, how that. down bad do you have to be to click on a fucking Pornhub ad, bro? Be associated with the screenshot and their characters. Ain't no fucking question. way. And this was indeed true because the internet never forgets. And yeah, this was true because whenever you bring up Cutie Cinderella or Pokemon, I'm not saying that this is always brought up but it was a memorable thing that happened in the twitch storyline thank god twitch is fading away go follow me on kick and actually cutie cinderella confirmed this sentiment in a stream where she said this is what it looks like to feel violated this is what it looks like to see yourself naked against your will being spread all over the internet the anger could be felt as she blustered out Fuck atrioc for showing it to thousands of people some other reactions from female streamers were from tweets like this atrioc also recognized that his bad decision had turned him from a respectable person into a deep fake keyword guy and vowed to let his actions speak going forward then, in a bid to show good faith, partnered with a law firm, Ryan Morrison, and had the website taken down. After the incident, Atrioc said he was, quote, stepping away from content creation and his creative agency, off-brand. However, just six weeks later, on March 14th, 2023, he re-emerged in a stream with a whole new project, taking down deepfake sites that were taking advantage of female streamers. Apparently, he had Hammer. given $60,000 to a law firm called Morrison Rothman. So now you want to take down, Twitch, a, now you want to take down a website? MCA takedowns or reputation management. He also explained that he was working with Maya Higa, who accepted his apology to help Certas, a company that fights similar deepfakes, run their algorithm. Allegedly, other streamers that have been impacted, like Cutie and Pokimane, are helping as well. In that brief and choppy stream, he also told his fans to not expect any regular content from him. Clearly, those few seconds on an open tab ruined his career. I remember when the situation was going on, and it was a very, like, new problem to have. This wasn't happening even last year. I did see, like, some, like, I don't know, like, a group of people. It was a lot. But, like, the minority are arguing, like, so what? It's not actually them. Them, you know, but it's like the it's, it's still SA. weird Not though because he's literally because friends problem. with them really with these girls though. You scratching your head. That's really that's nice. that's, that's weird. Mm, damn, this ramen is hot, bro. Like it's to the point where like I can't even. I need something to cool it down. I need something to cool it down. Wait, I don't take up too much of your time. So let's go back to the video. Get your shit off, Matt Delore Vaughn. Matt, aka Delore, is a big name on Twitch and has been for a while. Back in 2017, aged 28, he had about 315,000 followers, but now is at 724,000 thanks to his professional Overwatch player career. It's thus surprising that someone doing so well in his streaming career would ruin it for saying slurs. Also, it seems like Delore would be much further along than every now, fucking streamer had only avoided letting out his frustrations on other people. This is because as of now, he's had at least three incidents that were literal career ending moves, and he only managed to escape complete career nosedive by a whisker. First, in 2017, he was dropped by an Overwatch team in Toronto Esports for saying racial slurs during a match live on Twitch. In this clip, which is still available from another account on Twitch, you can hear him scream before he goes on to say the n-word about 60 times. Yeah, he said it 60 times. 60 Apparently, times, bro? player, which was using Widowmaker, was cheating and he was just frustrated. His excuse was that he was having times, a day and he didn't get enough sleep before getting on the game. Great excuse, man. Guys, if you ever say the n-word, make sure to say you were having a bad day and you didn't get enough sleep. You you should be good. He claimed that Twitch didn't work for two hours. Nah, getting that shit off 60 times is insane. <laughs> All these details can be seen in this tweet where he issued an official apology saying, I won't try to argue or make an excuse. I ain't even hear a nigga in a Call of Duty lobby say that in words 60 times in a row. Viral, he was dropped from the esports team with the esport president, Ryan Pallet, saying, Toronto esports is an organization built on inclusivity and we have always had a zero This nigga was trying to get the high score. Of discrimination. His Twitch channel was also shut down for violating terms of service. Delore then went ahead to say that he deserved to have his contract ended and in a tweet he added that he was done with esports and not coming back
back. This wasn't true though, because he did in fact come back and continued with his maniac like rages. Bro. For instance, in this video posted on Reddit, you can see him breaking his keyboard and slamming it in a moment of rage. This was in 2019, and he got a ban for his actions. In fact, anger became a part of his reputation. Still in 2019, and this is the third incident, he got angry and told a female teammate on Apex Legends to quote, go cook a f***ing sandwich. The full statement was actually f***ing trash. Go cook a f***ing sandwich, you f***ing bitch. Sorry for the censorship there, guys. Y'all Yo. know YouTube been hard on me lately, so hey, I gotta got deal with problems, some sound effects bro. I'll put over my voice. This happened after apparently he was denied armor. He had asked, can I have the armor or I'm gonna leave? To which the teammate problem. responded with leave. He immediately started hurling obscenities at her saying, I hope you get on. His sexist remarks got him, quote, indefinitely banned. Although Twitch later reviewed the ban, in the tweet, Delore responded to the ban saying, I have made mistakes, but this is my entire life. He added that, Twitch is my life. Please don't take it away from me. Fuck the ban you. was lowered to 30 days. This person has a very uh, bad reputation. I don't see how you could undo all this. Well, you can't really. But yeah, let's head on to the next one. Angel Zillion OP Hamilton. The nigga that got up from the wheelchair? Being a YouTuber is a lot of people's dreams. Being a streamer is a lot of people's dreams. We're in 2023 now where content creation rules the internet. So it's not surprising that people will do anything to reach that status. With Hamilton, it seems like he hung on to a lie so long that eventually he forgot to keep it up on camera. That's so tough, what happened bro. and why did his career suddenly end? Check this this situation is that's crazy. Where he got the information from. The following are some of the details of what went down. Hamilton had apparently been in a wheelchair since 2011 due to a serious car accident a year later in mid 2012 he joined twitch and became this famous the video funny though because when skills and the fact he got he up the bitch that he was talking to she tried to spin the <laughs> and had a steadily <laughs> she tried to spin it and change the subject like nobody seen this nigga get up from a fucking wheelchair when his promotional facebook page was hacked the hacker as seen in this post and this one for instance strongly suggested that hamilton was able to walk and was simply faking the disability in order to get donations that's crazy that the hacker bro had known hamilton personally however because the hacker never released any actual evidence the situation got brushed off as someone who was just trolling but the seed had been planted in the fans minds they would begin scrutinizing hamilton more closely this is how someone ended up finding out on january 10th 2013 he had been banned on blizz for botting and had lied that the ban was for account sharing this put him in a bad light and in the reddit post some people questioned his disability claims now that he was already lying about one thing while this redditor was only speculating he was eventually proven right on april 5th 2013 during what seemed like a break during a stream hamilton simply takes off his headphones stands up and walks away. He had left the stream on so it the whole thing was captured on this wide She was like, oh my god, so let me tell you about my cat and what he did. <laughs> like, no, bitch. This nigga just got up from a wheelchair. Fuck your story. What, what are we doing? What, what's, what's happening right now? said, oh my god, the exact moment that Hamilton stood up from his wheelchair. If that's not an admission of guilt, then I don't know what is. She then tried rumbling on about other stories to her shock but the damage had been done. Hamilton that shit was funny. The comments started going off and in a rush to control the damage, he tried lying and said he fell off the wheelchair <laughs> he tried deleting the comments out of here calling him out but soon after this post went up on reddit exposing his scam to thousands his facebook got hacked again and this post went up further confirming that he was scamming people all along following the incident twitch banned his account and terminated his contract with them after being away for a while hamilton returned to twitch under a new account it's bluish and then got outed on another reddit post seeing no other option Man, he decided to come clean once and for all he did an interview with youtuber wavy websurf where he said that the reason that he could stand up is that he had been been undergoing physical therapy sessions. I don't understand why you still gotta lie. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> his career has long since been dead, and it doesn't look like he's gonna have a footing in the streaming world ever again, unless he goes to Kick. Follow me on Kick. His new YouTube channel only has 8,900 subscribers, and it seems to be inactive. His Twitter account is also mostly dormant, and when it was active, it looks like he was promoting a TikTok account, which no longer exists. Leah, legendary Leah May. Twitch has come under fire many times for the misbehavior of some of the streamers on their platform. However, an incident that tops many was when streamer Legendary Leah claimed that kids with cancer are meant to die. Of course, this Yo, was a dumb and insensitive what thing the to say, fuck? and rightfully so, it Yo. a lot of people. This led to her career taking a big hit. So Yo. what exactly went down for her to warrant that statement? How? Well, it all started when one user who had donated to Leah asked her to promote their stream because it was raising money for St. Jude's cancer research. This request seemed to have triggered her as she went on a whole lecture on why kids with cancer are meant to die. In the clip, she starts off with, what? I think people should know by now, children that have cancer are gonna die and they are meant to die. She then proceeds to lay out her Yo! thought process and saying people should listen to her because she was a bio major. And although she tries saying that she isn't trying to be mean or anything, this doesn't make the rant any less How sensitive. do you part, say that, that and that say not to be mean? What? The what? And that, quote, something really, really awful happened. What if a child with cancer was watching your stream? Immediately people in the comments started pushing back against her dumb take 
with some then they were like well monster. shit also although she tried adding that people should donate to saint jude's to help with cancer research her message had been tarnished by the cool i was just watching my favorite streamer there go my fucking hope some people started pointing out that this was part of her character with one user saying that quote she's genuinely not gonna say that word and that she behaves like a 10 year old in most of her videos also some suspected that this was just a publicity stunt because she had been known for doing unconventional stunts to gain more popularity in the past she had already been branded a quote booby streamer which just means that she was one of those streamers trying to get attention from what they wear rather than their content in fact as an article on geek out so she said that she had a clout basically wearing tight fits they do looking to draw attention on her cleavage and drinking clout. alcohol during they do her streams and this could be true because in the video clip we saw she seems intoxicated to a certain level she did then go on twitter to apologize for the reckless statements but the damage to her career remained it's also worth noting that she seems to thrive in the controversy because just a few weeks later she got banned for 30 days for allegedly flashing her vagina during a live stream while Bro. she was uh trying to stand up again she Bro. went on twitter to deny it saying for the record thighs don't equal vag the surprising they thing is that despite the advance in her they career they she's still on twitch with her account now having 614,000 followers this is surprising compared to the 500,000 she had in 2016. yeah that's it for this one let's move on to the next one joe crazy Jay she not banned five ortega this is a warning, I am going to be talking about this right here. Now, there are plenty of ways to get banned on Twitch. San Andreas. I'm sure you could breathe the wrong way, and a Twitch admin would ban you for a lifetime. But domestic abuse is among the worst that I've seen someone get banned for on Twitch. In 2016, Twitch banned a streamer by the name of Joe Daddy 505 after this clip of him in an altercation with his girlfriend emerged. The video, also shared under this Reddit post, is a disturbing account of Joe Daddy 505 seemingly beating and f***ing a woman. Oh Apparently, my god, bro! A, a fucking 2K streamer? Finished. He forgot to turn off the audio on his console and thousands of people could hear what he was doing in the background he can be heard hurling threatening words and insults at the woman even as she screams get off of me the audio gets pretty ugly and he goes on to tell her some things that i'm not gonna repeat the whole thing lasts about five minutes and every minute of it is disturbing even going by the transcription of the conversation on this reddit post in the comments the original audio from twitch although now deleted was watched over 600,000 times in response to the clip on an instagram wow. post joe daddy 505 claimed he was innocent saying no i did not rape her. I hit her and fell on top of her and hit her again. I know I shouldn't have done that. It's a fucked up move. I that don't make it any fucking better, bro. That don't make it any better, bro. Made. I'm sorry. However, it's suspected that this might not have been him posting because his social media accounts had apparently been hacked. Also worth noting is that New Mexico police were made aware of the video and traced it back to his home. No, I didn't sexually county, assault her. I just beat her up. I just beat her fucking ass. Forward first. Joe That's Daddy it. 505 got banned on Twitch immediately. When Engadget reached out to Twitch over the incident, Twitch said, if a credible threat of imminent physical harm or actual harm to others is made on our platform and timely reported to Twitch, stupid. Twitch makes best efforts to reach out to appropriate local law enforcement. In short, Twitch confirmed that in a case like this, they will contact authorities. In addition to the ban, Joe Daddy 505 also did get the wrath of people as many took to social media to give him a piece of their minds. Daily Mail sampled some of those tweets made under hashtag Joe Daddy 505. All social media accounts under his name were, however, scrubbed clean. So far, there have been no signs of him on the internet. Now, if anyone on this list really ruined their career forever, it has to be this dude. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you guys liked it, make sure to leave a like. And if you crazy. are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. W sure vid is always. If you don't like watching streamers, 